There we go. Hey guys, welcome to another puppy live stream here at Willow Ridge Acres. Uh, as you're tuning in, let us know where you're watching from. Drop a comment in the live chat. Let us know where you're watching from. We'll love to give you a shout out. And uh, we're coming to you live on a Sunday night. This isn't our normal schedule, uh, but we've got some things going on this week. Um, so we wanted to still give you a live stream for the week. So this is what time worked for us uh, on a Sunday evening. So hopefully you guys can join us and um you know you still enjoy watching the puppies here and we already have uh forrest tuning in he said hi from richmond virginia still traveling for work i'll be home on tuesday awesome. thanks for tuning in forrest we've got bill tuning in bill t from uh from pennsylvania thanks for watching We got all kinds of action going on. We've got the puppy cam and we have the Owen cam. The Owen, the Owen cam is back by popular demand. It was pretty popular last uh, live stream. So, <laughs> Ashton Marie is tuning in uh, from Nieder, I, I think it's Nederland, Texas, right? Yep. If you guys have any questions let us know in the in the live chat uh we'll love to answer any questions you might have about great pyrenees or even just like small farm living do you want to catch them up on uh what's been going on with the puppies this week um not a lot it's a lot of playing eating Playing and eating. Yeah. yeah, last week was before with uh, all the puppy selections. Uh, now that that's over, uh, it's just a lot of you know keeping an eye on them, playing with them, loving on them, and uh, waiting for uh, you know pickup time for the puppies. So uh, some of them actually get picked up in just about a week. So eight days. yeah, eight days. And the first ones start going home in about eight days. So it happened quick. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Bina John is tuning in. She said hi. Welcome, welcome to the live stream. Owen, oh, which one is that? This all playful with you, Mister Black. It's Maximus. That's Maximus, Mister Black from Maze Litter. Yeah, a lot of them are napping because they just ate. If we kind of zoom in on this other view, uh, you can see them all just kind of laying down underneath Owen and Melissa. <laughs> so they'll wake up in a little bit and be a little more active. Mona's tuning in. How's it going, Mona? She said the puppies are so cute. Thanks for thanks for tuning in and watching. Yeah, I don't know that we have a like a current weight on them uh, within the past couple of days, but they're all gaining uh, a lot. So we're we're not weighing them every day anymore because we're very confident that they're healthy mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're gaining. So they're yeah, all eating dry food. yeah, they're all eating dry food at this point, which is a really good good sign. How's everybody's weekend going? Let us know in the in the live chat. This is kind of a, a different flow for us. We normally don't do the live chats on uh, on Sundays, so. Sure. Forrest said, "Love the Owen cam. He's awesome. <laughs> He's on the action cam." Bill said, "So cute."
the first of the puppies start going home in about eight days. And that, those are the ones that will be uh, like companion dogs um, from Millie's litter. So the companion dogs are able to go home at eight weeks old and Millie's litter will be eight weeks uh, and just about, what? yep, yep. So some of them, we only, we only have about a week left with them here. And, uh, but some of them, they're staying for you know, about a month longer uh, to get livestock guardian training. So that'll be fun. Oh, Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forrest asks, uh, any update on the potential sibling rescues? Uh, funny you ask. Um, so it's kind of been a back and forth uh, via email. Um, I haven't actually gotten to talk with. So from what I understand, the current situation is that they're at, they're at a rescue. Um, that isn't normally a great Pyrenees rescue. Yeah, they're, 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 they're not at a, a uh, rescue that's specific for great Pyrenees. They're just at like a, like almost like an animal shelter, I guess. Um, but a, friend of somebody that has gotten two puppies from us that lives down the street from the people that got two puppies from us i guess volunteers at this shelter where they took these two great pyrenees in um and that they're they've been looking for um like a foster or you know a, a rescue that has experience with the breed uh, so she reached out to us to see if we would be uh, interested in bringing them in and, you know, re rehabilitating them and, um, you know, finding a good homes for them. And, uh, you know, we said, absolutely, we would, we would be honored to do that. Uh, but then, um, you know, the rescue that they're at right now, never, never reached out to us. Um, you know, it's been kind of this back and forth with the friend that volunteers there, um, for about a month now. And the last we heard is that they're supposed to be calling us. So uh, we're just waiting on a call to see, but we actually um, we, we actually had a phone call with a uh, uh, one of our local um, animal shelters here, uh, like a hum humane society, and we're actually filling out paperwork to become uh, what they call a transfer partner um, for. And, and we told them if they ever get any Great Pyrenees that are surrendered there, that um, you know we. We um, honestly, we pray that they um, are able to find great homes for all the dogs that they bring in, including the Great Pyrenees. But um, we just wanted to try to partner up with them and say, like, hey, if you have trouble finding a good home for one, and and you know, the last thing we want is for it to be put down because they can find a good home for it. Um, so you know, we're basically trying to create a relationship there where um, we can provide. Uh, you know, a good foster care for them and, and honestly good training um, for the breed and, um, you know, get them to where uh, we can get them in, into good homes. So mm -hmm. something exciting. Stay tuned for more updates on that. Um, yeah, something we're working on. Mona said, I wouldn't want to let them go. Mm. The puppies. Yeah, <clears throat> it's tough. Yeah, um, we've shared in previous live streams, uh, something that really helps us <laughs> in, in that process is uh, we don't name the puppies ourselves. Uh, to us, they are the color of their collar. That's how we identify them. Uh, we put a, a colored collar on them from when they're born. So, you know, it's like Mr. Orange or Miss Pink. And then uh, once the puppies have been selected by their future forever families, um, we asked them if they have a name picked out for that puppy. And, uh, once we know the puppy's chosen name, you know, the, the chosen name for that puppy, uh, we start calling it by that name and that helps us to, to not get attached yeah. because we realize this, if we didn't name this puppy, somebody else did, and it's their puppy. We just, we have the blessing of yeah. loving on them for, you know, eight to 12 weeks and then sending them on their way and, you know, yeah. hoping that, uh, we set them up for success. So. Jenna is tuning in. She said, hello, all just tuning in from Kentucky. Yes. They're getting big, Jenna. 
<laughs> this one right here is already like learning the the pure paw. Yes. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the live chat. We'd be honored to you know answer any questions you might have about Great Pyrenees or um, small farm living stuff like that. Uh, yes. Esther. Will you, will you show uh, Millie's green? He's right here. <clears throat> This is Millie's green. Awesome, awesome. He's just crashed out right now. <laughs> yep. They've been spending quite a bit of time outside, uh, like in this run. So they've been playing a lot and I've been on like three hours. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be their bedtime in 30 minutes. Yep. And as you see, uh, both litters are combined out there. So they've been playing together and they, they get along just fine. Yeah. Just more uh, Russell, oh. Russell buddies to play with. Melissa, who do you have up with you? Esther. We have them outside for their feeding times and then we're intentionally taking them out to use the bathroom and yeah trying to get all that going and way less laundry already which is great yeah all the whelping blankets they are catching on quickly that they don't really want to use the restroom where they sleep <laughs> so they're trying to hold it so yeah that's been nice for said the girls love the birthday notes y'all sent them very cool i'll print them to add to their puppy book that's awesome yeah so um our the litters from last year uh are, are all turning one this week so we sent out uh emails like uh happy birthday emails to all the puppies so um yeah we honestly our our intention was to we were wanting to send out cards, mail cards, mail cards but we don't have a good excuse, except that we have puppies and five kids. And yes. <laughs> the goats and yes. Time got away from us. So we did the next. Put it on the calendar this for next year. Yep. So we did the next best thing and just sent a good old fashioned uh, email. Yeah. Happy birthday email. Oh, Joanne is tuning in. She said hi from Vermilion, uh, Ohio. Thanks for watching, Joanne. I know this is like not our normal schedule on Sunday evening, but we're not going to be able to uh, live stream on Tuesday. So we still wanted to get you guys a you know, live stream for this week. So here we are. <laughs> we're actually traveling Ohio tomorrow. Yeah, we're actually traveling to Ohio tomorrow, uh, Joanne. I don't know where your city is, but. Yeah, we're going to be in Cincinnati. Um, no. No. Yeah, we'll be up in Cincinnati. Not all of us. Uh, we, we'll have the puppies very well taken care of the whole time. Melissa and Owen will still be here. <laughs> Joanne said, uh, watching the puppies grow is making me want another uh, one. My girl is six now. They are the best dogs. Very much. Yeah. Yeah, we said it. I feel like every um every live stream you know i, I can't I'm not having a great hearing needs at this point so mm -hmm. and by the way joanne thank you so much for the super chat we appreciate the love and support yeah she said 
I'm on Lake Erie, about three hours from Cincinnati. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I actually looked at the map the other day just to see like where we were actually flying. Like, I don't know Ohio geography very well. It's really up by like Michigan and like all all that area. It was like way further north than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me sound stupid, but yeah. <laughs> Texas is like its own country at this point. It is. So. It is. We can drive literally eight to 10 hours and still be in we Texas. Stay, yeah. Not even cross the state line yet. <clears throat> Owen, you're doing great on the Owen cam, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> He was all excited about getting to do the Owen game again. It's way more action than the yeah. puppy cam. This angle's a little boring. They're all just under. Yeah. It's not even that hot right now. It's kind of it looks like it's about to rain, but we're kind of waiting it out. Yep. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the live chat. Love to answer them for you. Who's that? Um, I think it's Marty. That's Aspen. Oh. Aspen. That's Aspen. She's so sweet. This is like extreme close up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get them all worn out, Owen. Melissa's well, playing with one of them up on the on the chair. If you're just tuning in, let us know where you're watching from in the live chat. We'd love to give you a shout out. I think Owen literally like he crawls around. Oh yeah, yeah there you, you can see him. Yep. Last week, remember we thought he said, "I have poop on me," but he was like, "I have proof." He was yeah. crawling around out there. Yep. The Is that one Bane? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's Bane. Grandma Doris tuning in. She said, Monkey is here from North Texas. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Who's that, Owen? Um, yeah. That's Esther. Dear Dana is tuning in again. She says she's watching from Atlanta. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Doing anything with them is a little bit of a challenge right now. Even like doing poop pickup, they like everything's a toy. So they try to like grab the bag and like your leg and you're like. You can't wear shoes in yeah. there with uh, shoestrings because they'll untie them every single time. Or sandals, unless yeah. you your toes nibble on. Yep. If you wear open-toed shoes like sandals or flip-flops, your little toesies are going to get chewed on pretty quick. <clears throat> Let's see. David Payne is tuning in. He, he asks... Uh, do any of your adult dogs live outside a fenced area? I would like to give my dogs more freedom, especially when they are sitting out on the patio, but I'm afraid they will run off. Any tips? Uh, no, we, we have our whole property fenced in. Um, they Great Pyrenees don't really seem to know boundaries unless you have a really good fence that will force them to stay in. Um, I feel like if if you didn't have offense um that he will roam yeah mm -hmm. 
he's going to roam. He's going to try to expand his territory. And I think we had a viewer a few weeks ago who said they were using the underground. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we did have a, a viewer saying that they use like the, you know, the, uh, it's not, it's not an electric fence. I mean, I guess it is, but like the under the invisible fence right. is what they call it. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, where you bury the, the line underground and they have like the e collar that, you know, senses that. Um, but we haven't tried that. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you if that works or not from personal experience. Mm -hmm. Um, we live on way too much solid rock to try to bury a invisible fence on our property. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joanne just said, uh, they will go as far as they can go and call it their territory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I would be a little, uh, leery to, um, test not having a fence with the uh, great Pyrenees. Um, that being said, you know, we, we have our whole property fenced in and then we have um, like a gate, you know, where we drive in and out of uh, to get on our property. And um, <clears throat> even Millie and May, while they're on like maternity leave, they're over here like on our on the house side of our property right now. And uh, they've learned to kind of respect the gate and not run through it while we have it open. Um, you know, as we're driving a vehicle through, but um, I still wouldn't trust them with no fence. No, for sure. And honestly, just for the safety of them, like, I mean, I guess there's some owners that are like, you know, oh, they'll come back, right? Even if they run off, they'll come back. Um, but where we live, we're, we don't live very far from like the highway, and the speed limit's like 65 on that road. Um, so just for their safety, I'm not trying to let them like run off and get hit by a car on, on the highway. That would be bad. Marcia's tuning in. She said here from stone mountain, Georgia, Esther is one happy puppy. Yeah. Sure. They're all doing really well. Not sure what that was. <laughs> one of our kids slamming something in the house. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, Kara said, David Payne, they will definitely roam. Our Great Pyrenees is 11. Oh, or, one oh, one and a half, 11. <laughs> I was like, 11 and two? <laughs> one and a half years old, and he attempts to roam all the time. Yep. Kara has a deposit on one of these puppies that you're seeing right here. So we'll be picking up another one to be a companion to the one, the one and a half year old they already have. Your Dan said, I would be afraid they're just stubborn enough to test the underground invisible fence. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> I know it's, it, it can be, um, what do you call, controversial, I guess, uh, using like an e-collar on dogs. Uh, but we actually tried one uh, for a little bit on Mac because um, he he was just, he kept testing the fence and, and stuff. And, um, but. Do you. I think you mean for like an hour. Yeah. Yeah. But we, <laughs> we put we it bought, on and it was like he did not care. Yeah. We bought one of those e collars off of yeah. uh, Amazon. It was like one of the ones that's highly rated and, you know, it, it wasn't I cheap. Think this was before we did the well, like situation. Fence. Yeah. <laughs> but we tried that on them. And what I found is that they have such a, like a thick mane that, uh, you know, it was one of those collars that the remote had like, uh, like 15 different power setting level um and you know i didn't want to i'm not trying to like shock him like crazy so i started off like super low like on two or something and when he was like trying to get through the fence before we did our electric fence i you know i was watching him from the house and i was trying to zap him and he didn't even he didn't even respond to it so i like cranked it up a little bit more i was able to crank it all the way up and he never never even responded to it and i i tested it uh, to make sure that it worked and it worked, but it's just like, it wasn't like big enough. Like, I guess the prongs weren't big enough to get through his, like his fur. Did you put it like, on yourself? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put it on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure it worked. <laughs> David said, I don't trust him either. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would, um, I mean, if you're wanting them to be on the porch, I would just in, maybe get like a really, really long lead, you know. Yeah. Just let them do that. Yeah. I always just love to be near us. So, I mean, 
ours is fenced in, so it's hard for me to say, but even when we're outside, they're generally wherever we are. So. Right, right. Um, yeah, and we have ours on the porch, but we also have our whole property fenced in. Mm -hmm. So on the porch is in a fenced in area. <clears throat> Joanne said most great Pyrenees will not come when called unless it's mm -hmm. on their best, in yeah, it's, yeah, their best interest. Uh, it was very scary when my dog ran off during a winter storm. She finally mm. uh, got yes. in my car. Yeah. Do you remember when we found Mabel down by the highway and we were literally having to like what corral call, her? Yeah. yeah. Where like both of us were moving like side to side just to even get her like into back in with us, even though she knew who we were. Yeah. She was just their mom. She was very spooked. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. They, their communities definitely don't have a, a good recall. So, they, if you, if you call them by name and you try to get them to come to you, if they come to you, it's because they wanted to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because they decided, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do. Um, they're not coming to you because you called them. They're just kind of stubborn like that. But uh, but honestly, it's part of their instincts. So they were they were bred to be very independent um, and be out with their flock for days on end without any human interaction. So uh, they weren't bred to, <clears throat> to wait for human commands to do what they're supposed to do. They were bred to just be independent. So uh, and they're, they're a centuries old breed. So it's like those instincts are very, very ingrained in them. So that's what we're still seeing to this day. Uh, so some people will say that they're stubborn and they are, but that's, that's what they were bred to be like. So uh you just kind of have to work with them on that. You know, they're, they're, they're not really a, uh, if you're looking for a breed that is very obedient. And when I say they're, it's not that they're disobedient, like they're bad dogs. It's just that they don't obey commands, if that makes sense. But they're not like, they're not going to be I feel like getting into they stuff. They just like calmly stare at you when you ask them to do something and then they have like an internal dialogue that's like, do I yeah. do it or not? And it's like, yeah, super slow. And yeah, if you're looking for a dog that's, you know, good with commands, like, and can be trained to do stuff like you need like a golden retriever or something, you know, um, we, one of our inside family pets is a golden retriever, blue healer mix. And she has an amazing recall. Um, one time yeah she, she can literally be out at the gate barking her head off at the amazon guy and if i just open the door and call her name one time she'll stop barking turn around and run straight towards me it's an, it's incredible now the great pyrenees no yeah. <laughs> they're just gonna keep she also licks though so it's yeah like, she licks a ton our great pyrenees don't always lick. A give and take. <laughs> yeah oh here, here's a great question Marcia said, "Does Melissa Grace does Melissa Grace have the day off, or is she on vacation?" Yeah, she is. She's out there. She's out there. Yeah. She's sitting Let's in see. her lifeguard chair right now. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> She's out there just chilling with the puppies. Yep. Kirk is tuning in. Said Kirk here from Utah. My two are watching. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, Kirk. Kara said they are super stubborn and listen on their terms. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, once you understand that, you come to love it. Like it's, they're, again, it's not that they're not listening or disobeying in a bad way. It's just they, they kind of do their own thing, you know, and them doing their own thing, they're pretty amazing dogs. Um, they're just not the type that's uh, looking to, you know, be at your beck and command mm -hmm. all the time. It's just we like have different approaches with each of our dogs. Like how yeah. we know that they'll obey best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good comment. Uh, dear Dana said, they own you. You do oh, not own man. them. For real. Kind of like cats, I guess, right? Like cats are similar where if you call a cat by its name, it's like just going to like come to you. Right. Just, they... A cat comes to you because they like actually like you and decided that they want to come to you, right? I mean, like if Millie's outside on the porch and I'm just gonna like go to the garage and like get something 
she like sits up or like is like oh you're gonna come pet me and i literally have to run to the garage like physically run and i'm like not right now yeah because <laughs> like she's trying to make me pet her yeah grandma door asks uh meredith is trained meredith is trainable right which mm-hmm. all right melissa <laughs> all these m names <laughs> melissa do you want to share what things you've been able to train Meredith to do? And she's a great Pyrenees. Uh, wait, I can't help you. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> she knows sit down, um, spin, and then shake, and then just a couple of other ones, too. And she's, what, two or three? I can never remember. She's three. Yeah. So yeah. she's been working on that for three years. Yeah. Yeah, Melissa's been able to, yeah. to train Meredith, her Great Pyrenees that we have, um, to do you know, a, few, a few commands. It's possible. It is. Joanne said, I bought a $250 e-collar also. I only used it for one day for excessive barking. I just think it irritated her, and I've just accepted yeah. she's doing her job. Yeah. Yeah, we only kept ours for a day as well. They, we returned it immediately. Yep. We were like, this is not going to work. I think the Amazon <laughs> return said, like, our dog laughed at us when we used it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it literally had no... Oh, you mentioned it. I completely forgot we even... Bought one? Know. Yeah, yeah, that we tried that. Yeah, we tried that as a solution for when Mac was trying to dig through, like literally he ripped bite his fence. way and like rip his way through our fence. Um, we were trying to zap him to discourage him. And then finally we did uh, like an electric wire, electric fence on the perimeter of our fence. And um, he stays away from the yeah. fence now. The other day I went to pet him through the fence, which we tell the kids not to do all the time. I knew the fence was off, but even when I stuck my hand all the way through, he approached and was like, yeah. like I don't know if I should or not. Yeah, he has a immense respect for the fence now. Yep. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the live chat. We'd love to answer any questions you might have. Mm-hmm. Phil says, hello from Jenna and Phil from Kentucky. Thanks for tuning in. You already looked up their They're getting mucked all over. Yes. Well, let's see. This person said that's how you get them to obey. Treats are petting. Oh, yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah, Kirk said treats are petting. That's the way you get uh, Great Pyrenees to respond. Yeah. For sure. Yes. And then they'll let you know if, if you're done petting or not by yeah. giving you the pure paw. <laughs> <clears throat> Joanne said, my dog sits, speaks, waits, twirls, shakes. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, but it's yes. all for treats. Yes. yes. And it's it's difficult if you get one that's not food motivated. Uh, who is it? Millie. We noticed her for whatever reason this time around. She's so food motivated. Yes. And we actually told Melissa Grace the other day. I bet you could train her to do a few things because she's so food motivated. Right. Here's a great question. Marcia said, so Great Pyrenees are not a herding breed. They just protect. So they don't respond to your commands. Uh, correct. They, uh, great Pyrenees is not a, a herd dog. Um, yeah, some, sometimes people say, oh, yeah, those are you know, sheep herd dogs. Like, but they're, they're not. They're, they're livestock guardians. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not herding dogs. So we have a, a blue healer, and she is a herding dog. And you can like, immediately see the difference. Uh, in the way their instincts and, and what they want to do. Uh, Melissa Grace is teaching Rosie, that's our, our blue, blue dealer, dealer, to lay, like to give her a command, to lay down, show her a treat, and just walk. I mean, she walked halfway across the and yard. Stay the there, and, and stay there and stay laid down until she until tells she her to gives come. Her the command to move across the yard. Like, no, other, none of our other dogs are going to do no. that. No. <laughs> yeah. Rosie is very, uh, very intelligent, very trainable. But, but yeah, um, you know, the difference between like a, a herding dog and a livestock guardian, a livestock guardian, they're literally just, they're going to, there's, oh, Rosie. that's Rosie, our blue healer. Yeah. Hello, Rosie. <laughs> Hi. 
but uh the, yeah the difference is you know a livestock guardian like a great pyrenees is is bred to be out there with the flock the entire time like mm -hmm. all, all day long 24 hours a day seven days a week and just living amongst the flock and kind of just uh blending in with them and, and then if they perceive a threat whether it be uh, you know a, a range of things like a, a raccoon or a, a fox or a coyote or even uh, hawks from the air um, they're going to alert to that they're going to jump up and bark and scare it away and uh, if it doesn't scare it away they're, they'll stand their ground and they're not going to give an inch and um, you know fight that thing off so that it doesn't get anywhere near their herd or their flock whereas a a herding dog they don't really live with the uh <laughs> yeah rosie's doing some trips some tricks now but yeah a herding dog doesn't really live outside with the herd or the flock they're both working animals yeah it's just two different ways of working yeah so you know like a, a blue healer will go out with you to you know to the flock and or the herd and if you need the whole herd together and moved into a different uh pasture yeah, you give you give a command and that dog's going to run around and you know get all the goats to be together and move them through the gate uh it's pr pretty cool to see but uh great pyrenees would never do that no. <laughs> kara said uh will will our pup integrate well with our other dogs we have a female pup right now six months old yes yeah. yeah so as you can see right now like that's that's gloria right there on the camera she's our uh golden retriever blue healer mix <laughs> and then we have our blue healer and we we also have like a little chihuini <laughs> chihuahua um dotson mix those are like our inside dogs and you know our our great pyrenees are around them all the time and um you know the puppies right now you know we don't let these dogs in with the puppies I mean, through the fence, but through that yeah through that right. gate they can see and smell each other and they're getting socialized yeah. that way and anyone that we keep i'm not sure if she has an eight week or a 12 week anyone that we keep for 12 weeks will have full exposure to all of our animals all of our dogs everyone yeah so kara's uh so, is is a livestock guardian so yes um so they'll be fully yeah exposed yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Kara, yours, your pup for the last few weeks that uh, your pup is with us will be, you know, out with all the dogs on our property. So it's, it's going to be very well socialized with other animals. Um, so it, you know, it, it should get along very well with other dogs on your property. <clears throat> Kirk said, I'm running a fence uh, from our internet set set the boundaries and it works great but it cost me yeah. uh twelve hundred dollars but it works great i feel like we've spent, spent so much money on yeah fencing. we've we've spent a lot of money on fencing and we're about to spend some more because we're gonna we're gonna redo our fencing and give um give the animals a lot yeah. more space on our property <clears throat> Marcia, Marcia asks, what would they do if they encounter a human trying to steal livestock? Would they attack a human? That's a great question. Um, they're not really they're not really guard dogs from like an attack standpoint. Um, for the most part, what they're gonna do is they're gonna bark a ton and stand their ground and like stand between you and uh, what they're trying to trying to guard. Uh, now, it's not like out of the realm of possibilities that it would try to bite, but um, that's like they're that's the last thing that they're trying to do. Um, they're really just, you know, trying to stand their mm -hmm. stand their ground and guard by you know barking a lot. And and most, I feel like most humans see that big of a dog barking um, and barking aggressively and standing on their ground aren't you know aren't going to. Uh, they're going to pick a, so a softer target, most likely. So Yeah, I mean, I guess that's maybe where <clears throat> some of the, you know, train of thought of, like, them not interacting with humans. We don't raise our 
dogs that way. We never would. We yeah. have small children and but I mean there are some people who follow the train of thought that like once you get the dog, you don't interact with it. And I mean some of them may, but ours wouldn't do that. Right. Right. Let's see the real Terry's tuning in said hello Jacobs. Good evening from Michigan. Thanks for tuning in. It's good to see you. I know it's uh, uh, not on our normal schedule, you know, not normally Tuesday nights, uh, but we're going to be out of town. Me and Michelle and our youngest son, Jackson, are going to be out of town uh, on Tuesday. So we still wanted to be able to get, bring you guys a live stream this week. We didn't want to go like two whole weeks without one. Well, especially several are going home Monday night. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, a few of them that are going home um this coming not this coming six, but six. yeah f the fifth and sixth of june so if we didn't have the live stream at all this week by the time we have one the following tuesday several of the puppies will have already been taken home so we wanted to be able to you know give you guys a live stream we'll still have quite a few oh yeah we'll still have quite a few of them yeah it's, yeah i think it's about like five or six of yeah. them go home those two days Yep. <clears throat> Carrie said uh, our daughter was worried about herd mentality. Yeah, we don't really have the herd issue. I mean, with Rosie, our blue healer, <laughs> she, yeah, we do. Yeah, if we if we let her in with our goats or if we let our goats out like on this side to free range more, um, she'll, she'll go and, you know, in the heels and uh, try to get them all herded together and stuff. And, and even just the crazy, like, hey, like if, I don't know. Our, she doesn't bite our kids, but, you know, the cable guy came once and she bit him in the back of the leg. Yeah. She just she, has, she doesn't really bite. She nips. It's like a little, yeah. yeah. It's, a little, it's a little love tap, you know? And admittedly, <laughs> I mean, you know, we're not blue healer experts. Like, we have been learning as we, we go with her. So basically the process we had with Mac and Mabel, we've been learning with Rosie. Yeah. We're not going to breed Rosie though. Rosie yeah. is, is spade. Good. Yep. She has a so purpose we, here. Yep. So she, but we're kind of learning with her a lot. <laughs> yes. Joanne said their size and bark is very intimidating and deter people and animals. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Yeah, we had a, a friend, a family friend who's going to drop something off here at our house. And we have Monty over here. <clears throat> and he's not even mean. Like, I would say he's like our nicest dog. I don't yeah. know. So I get a text from her about an hour later that says, we pulled up to the gate and Monty was barking. So we decided to put it in your mailbox at the front of the neighborhood instead. Yeah. And it just like, you know, even though she knows Monty, like, I guess just the way he was barking because we weren't here, she just decided not to leave it on our front porch. <laughs> yep. Yep. <clears throat> See, Bill T is tuning in. He said, uh, I have a two-year-old Great Pyrenees named Bo. Uh, Badger markings, sweetest dog that I've ever had. Uh, met him when he was six weeks. Got him at eight weeks. Yeah. They, yeah, they're amazing dogs. They're great. Kirk said, uh, went camping, had a guy try to come through our camp. I'm glad my mail was on a chain or he would have mm -hmm. eaten the guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, you know, for the breed, violence is the last resort, but they yes. will do it if They'll they do it. feel the need. Yes, but it's literally like the last resort. It's like the last tool in their tool bag. Uh, that's why, you know, we, we've said it before uh, when it comes to being like a, a guardian dog, um, you know, the attacking or biting somebody is the last thing on their mind it's the last resort so it's it's like they're the the low liability guard dog mm -hmm. you know they <clears throat> nothing wrong with like a like a rottweiler or a, or a um doberman or something but you know those for guard dogs those are much more like an aggressive do guard dog they're gonna they're gonna bite first <laughs> yeah yep hey do you two want to wake everyone up so they can have a little bit of wiggle time before we put them down for night night. 
<laughs> we'll wake them all up so they can have some play time for the end of the live stream. Angel party. Yep. <laughs> True more Monty up. Hey bud. Let's know, let us know if you have any other questions, drop them in the live chat. We're gonna stay on for about like 15 more minutes. Yeah, Carrie has uh, Allie. Melissa Grace, can you show us Allie? Oh, right oh, here. <laughs> Sweet little Allie. She didn't want to get up. They all went right here. Yeah, Carrie or Kara, this is Allie right here. They must be really worn out because we were trying to wake them all up. Marsha asks, have they had supper? Yes. Yep. Yeah, they we ate. Five. Yeah, we feed them at five. So they ate about two hours ago. So they ate. They um, got and some playtime. Truth be told, we've been feeding a lot. Not too much food, but they've been getting seconds the last couple of days because they're eating everything. And I feel like I don't want them to have little hungry bellies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so they gosh. had like dinner and a half. <laughs> <laughs> she she's found like a little dirt spot yeah. on the yeah to lay down in. She's sleepy. Marcia said, "What a sweet girl." <laughs> she's giving you the side eye. Gotta tell Owen to wake everyone up. That was going on that phone. He tried. <laughs> they all found a new spot to lay down. <laughs> Let me see a few of them are wrestling. Yeah, there's a couple playing. <clears throat> Kirk asked a good question. He said, my male, <clears throat> excuse me, my male is skinnier and built to run. My female is a very thick yeah. girl. Is that normal? Yes. Yeah, uh, that's actually <laughs> similar to Mac and Mabel. Uh, our our boy, um, our you know, our breeding male, Mac, he's uh, you know, he's tall uh, and he's pretty skinny. He could he could put on some more weight from you know with his frame. He still weighs quite a bit probably weighs uh right now around like 125 but just for his frame and how tall he is he could weigh even more than that but he's um kind of got like an athletic build right now and he does a lot of running he runs around all you know all day um you know guarding our 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 goats and stuff um but then mabel our female um she she's a thick girl even meredith is thick. <laughs> yeah yeah and then Millie and May um, <laughs> don't have puppies. <clears throat> They're pretty thick. Yep. But, I mean, Monty, our rescue, he, he's a bit older, though. Um, he's not as active as Mac. Though. Yeah, he's not as active as Mac. And uh, he's... He's thicker. He's pretty thick. Yeah, he's he's stout. But, yeah, I think he's just it's just from his age. Mm-hmm. Marcia said, I wish I could give her cuddles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Joanne said, my girl is thick and my sister has her brother who is slim mm -hmm. compared. 
And I feel like, especially once you spay, if the female is spayed, especially, man, uh, it was like Mabel got spayed <laughs> and she like got that hysterectomy 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Joanne said, in, in six years, my dog has never tried to bite except one, excuse me, one shady guy opening our gate. So she's capable if necessary. Any stray animals, possums, etc. She just corners until I tell her it's okay. Yep. Yeah, they, they usually just like uh, corner them or, or stand their ground and, and just bark a lot to alert and, you know, keep the, uh, the herd protected. They'll, they'll fight back if they have to, though. I mean, there's, you know, I'm sure everybody's seen those, the videos. We talked about it before that, um, Great Pyrenees that fought off like six or seven coyotes. Dad. Yes. Uh, do you want to talk about the two new animals we got? <laughs> well, you do, don't you? Sure, you can. <laughs> you can tell them. <laughs> All the giggles. <laughs> okay, so our neighbors had four kittens and they gave us two of them. <laughs> so we named we named them Halpert and Beasley. Which Beasley. Nope, same Mine is Beasley. <laughs> so we we watch the office. We might be office fans, but yeah, they have uh two new kittens. That the neighbors, you know, called and said they had kittens. So all of a sudden we had kittens too. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are thrilled. Yes. <laughs> We've been doing all the chores for them too. <laughs> all right, Kirk said, uh, we were going to breed, but my male was lost and I wasn't going to help yeah. him find the spot. So no puppies. Oh no. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Max seems to be pretty good at it. Obsessed. Our boy, yeah. yeah, our boy. He's he he's pretty good. As soon as they uh, they go into heat, so we we skip heat cycles. We don't we don't breed our our females on back to back heat cycles. So. Um, but Mac, Mac will get it if we uh, if we let him in with the ladies while they're in heat. So we've got to keep them separated. If, you know, when we're trying to skip heats. Yeah. <clears throat> Judy's tuning in. Thanks for watching. She said, "I have two great Pyrenees boys. They are the loves of my life. I must admit, you have taught me about badger markings. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the cute videos of the puppies. Oh, thanks for watching." Yeah, I mean, we we learned as we went with it, you know, and uh, but we've had these this breed now for uh, going on six years, I guess, five years, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, the the badger markings are cool. It's kind of just like a, you know, we I don't really I I can't really say if I have a favorite like uh you know all white or or badger markings. I I think the badger markings just kind of add like a fun variety to it to the breed, so. <laughs> Marsha asks, so how do the dogs feel about the kitties? Mm. We still have the kitties in quarantine. Yeah, just the... making sure we don't bring up to one to fleas or anything. So we're letting their dewormer and their flea treatment and everything settle in. So they're actually living in the in one of the kids' bathrooms right now. Yes. But they're like this big, so they're tiny. It's they're good. They have plenty. They got a brand new fluffy bed and yep. Yeah. They're a, a what? A lot of toys. A lot of toys. <laughs> they're little murder kittens. <laughs> trying to murder. It those actually toys. for me was like so we do worm all the dogs. It's fine. I'm used to that all the time. Giving cats medication and giving dogs medication are two totally different things. And it, it caught me off guard, like how I forgot how bad it was. Yeah, so this is how this story went. Uh, I was out, you know, at work and driving around and uh, I get a text message uh, from my wife saying, 
that the neighbor across the street has has kittens. Um, what else did you say? He said, "Hold on, I, I need to I need to check the receipts here. I need to like read it verbatim." Well, because I thought I asked <laughs> Let me find permission. It. Like I no, asked. she <laughs> looking back, she's like, "I asked you." I'm like, "You did not ask." All right, so here's what she said verbatim. The neighbor has two kittens for us. And I I responded with that like reaction like gift. It's like, like, excuse me? Like, and then she responded and said, I saw them. It's a done deal. Wait, are there timestamps on this? Because I feel like I yes. need. Okay. So I originally texted him at 1042 a.m. And he waited till 1104. I was <laughs> working. Reply. And then I saw them by 1118 and it was done. So, I mean, that was a solid 30 minutes. So <laughs> I guess I had a time window. of. I, I mean, let's be honest. I never had a choice. <laughs> it was too late. <laughs> Gosh. Anyways. Yep. Sorry. I thought I asked, but no, you they're here ask. now. Yep. <sighs> Sorry, everybody tuning in. They're not as active this week as they were last week. They're uh, a lot more worn out today. Been playing a lot. We'll drop any uh, last minute questions you might have in the live chat. Uh, I'd love to answer any questions you might have. We're going to be uh, wrapping up the, the live stream in just a few minutes here. So if you have any more questions, drop them in the chat. We'd love to answer them for you. Which one is that? Snow. That's snow. Millie's orange. Yes, Millie's orange. <clears throat> I don't know if uh, Phoebe's mom is watching. Phoebe got... Is Millie's red? That girl is chunky. <laughs> I picked her up and I was like, "Girl, yeah, where's Phoebe at?" We got a super chat from Grandma Dora. She's she says for uh, stuff for the kittens. Oh, thank you, thank you. Did you hear that, Melissa Grace? Yes. <laughs> she has stuff picked out that we left at the store. We said we're going to be responsible at the store. Right? Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> Marcia exactly. said, "Exactly." addition to Noah's Ark. Exactly. What, the kittens? Yes. We, we love animals. I mean, it's, it's you are, obvious. If you and I went to the store, and they are not from a store, but if we were at the store and they were there, we would have come home. I like the pet store. Yes. And nah. you would have participated in that. Do you remember when we went on a date night to the pet store <laughs> and we're like, if he gives us a sign, we're taking him No. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> we got to show the kittens on a live stream soon. We will for next week, buddy. They're so dramatic with their noises. Joanne said, be safe on your trip to Ohio. You are always welcome to visit our lake home if you are in Vermilion. And I also, I'm also close to Cedar Point Amusement Park. We appreciate that. But uh, yeah, we're not, we're not going to be up there for, for a fun visit. So not yeah, this time, not this time. Maybe one day. Yes. We appreciate that though. Oh, did you see that? Oh, uh, I missed this comment. Sorry, Terry. Uh, Terry said, I, I like to share your puppy videos to folks who might be having a rough day. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it brings some joy to our lives and we just love to share it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just watching them. If you follow us on what, like Instagram or is that where you're putting them? TikTok? Yeah. On Instagram, They're on TikTok and even on our YouTube on like shorts. Yeah. Just little videos of them as they're right now. They're just so 
<laughs> believe it or not, they're super active despite how they look right now. Yeah. And just like so entertaining, like the things that they're doing, like even when they're like trying to chew on the poop bag, it's like, it's just, it's cute. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're full of energy until they're not. And they seem to not be <laughs> right at the beginning of the live stream. So <laughs> Joanne, thank you so much for the super chat. She said for all the miles you are oh. feeding, appreciate it. Hey, Edward's tuning in. He said he made it. Uh, yard work and Marley hike done 85 Ooh, degrees in Connecticut. Here. Yeah. Today it was like 70 something. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Edward, that it was hotter there in Connecticut than it was in South Texas. Today, the high was 81. So that must have been a, a sweaty hike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marley's wiped out, I bet. And uh, thank you for the super chat for yeah. the, the Memphis we carrot fun. Today. Yeah, we got more carrots today from uh, from Sam. So we're staying stocked up. <clears throat> Terry said, uh, safe travels and God bless you and the family. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I think we're going to post a little Instagram and TikToks during the week, right? Melissa Grace is going to film some stuff while we're gone. And yeah. So yeah. We'll still be no puppy stuff. Just yeah. We'll still be sharing, uh, you know, some puppy content. Um, Melissa will be, you know, the a camera person for that. And, um, and we'll be able to share some of that on our Instagram and on, you know, Facebook and stuff. So stay tuned there. And uh, like we said before, we're not going to have a live stream this Tuesday. That's why we're live tonight on Sunday night. Uh, but we'll be back live again uh, the following Tuesday. We'll be back mm -hmm. on that Tuesday schedule. So this was kind of a special Sunday night one to make up for the fact that we're not going to be live on Tuesday. Back to the Owen cam. Oh, uh -oh. it's not Owen. It's the <laughs> Melissa cam. All right, I'm going to have to edit it. <laughs> oh, he's going to ask for it back now. Wow. Oh, I was just about to change it. She just doesn't want to be on camera. Yeah. You get to honor her, Owen. No. <laughs> 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 well awesome well i think we're gonna wrap up tonight's live stream we got a trip to to get ready for and uh pack up for and stuff so uh, again stay tuned to our social media and we'll be we'll still be posting some puppy stuff um and again we'll be back not this tuesday but the following uh -oh. so <laughs> i guess owen ended that yeah i guess owen ended his <laughs> But Terry said the field of puppy dreams. Yes, yeah, that's right. Real. That's right. Well, awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate all the love and support from you guys. And uh, we'll okay. see you again. Oh, of course, they're starting to wake up right now, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys again next time.